I heard a splat of sound. Looking towards where the sound came from, I saw a smashed dumpling sticking to my mom's cheek as she sat across from me. Old hags and pool folks should stay away. My mom wiped her face with a napkin, trying to look unfazed, but her expression was filled with disgust. You're Sarah Murphy, handling foreign currency deposits at the New York Bank, aren't you? Yes, that's me. You don't seem to have dementia at keeping up a part-time work, right? I will remember you well until tomorrow. My mom sent this then quietly stood up and walked away briskly ahead of me. My name is Jessica Jones, a 29-year-old office worker. Since graduating from college, I dedicated myself to my job and didn't date. But a few months ago, I got a boyfriend. His name is Charlie. He was the same age, introduced to me by a colleague of mine. And although he had a steady job as a banker, he was nice and gentle and a polite talker to everyone, so I felt comfortable with him. I would like to marry someone like him, I secretly thought to myself. With my desire, I thought it was too early to introduce him to my mom. I'm Charlie. I've been dating Jessica for three months now. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your polite greeting. You are a good man. Too good for my daughter. My mom smiled as she watched Charlie's polite greeting and his trembling hands presenting a gift. Jessica is really kind and hardworking. I'm the one who's undeserving. Is that so? She used to be such a klutz, a tomboy with short hair when she was little. All right. Would you like to see her album? Really? I would love to see it. Wait a moment, Mom. My mom welcomed Charlie, and the three of us had a delightful dinner that day. After that, Charlie and I often visited my mom's house together. My dad passed away when I was a little girl, and my mom raised me as a single parent. Your happiness is my happiness, Jessica. Thank you for introducing Charlie to me. She would say genuinely happy for my well-being. Seeing her happy face made me happy too. However, taking Charlie to see my mom too often made me worry that it might seem like I was pressuring him into marriage. I was considering marriage with Charlie, but I wasn't sure how he felt about it. When I told Charlie after visiting mom alone, he said, if you were going to your mom's, you should have told me. I was worried about her since she was feeling a bit under the weather last time and I wanted to see her face, plus I wanted to talk about the movie she recommended. It turned out Charlie and my mom were getting along better than I thought. Given my mom's calm and gentle nature, they probably just clicked. With work going smoothly and good relationships with my lover and family, I began to wonder if my life was going too well. Six months into our relationship, Jessica, for Mother's Day next month, shall we go out to eat just the three of us? There's a place I want to take you both. If you have plans just for the family, we can go another time. Really, I love the idea, Charlie. Mom will be thrilled for sure. So we decided to go out for dinner on Mother's Day. I thought about inviting my sister, but she was married and had little children, so we settled on just the three of us. Oh, I think I recognize this place. I love the Chinese food here. Really? You knew about this restaurant? Sure, I used to come here often. But Charlie, you really know my stuff finding a place I like. Charlie blushed with the compliment. Having never been to this restaurant, I followed Charlie and my mom's lead. The restaurant was adorned with chandeliers and large lanterns showcasing luxurious decorations. A waiter stood tall next to a large swivel table. I understood that this is a high-end Chinese restaurant. Then please bring us the special course, I ordered. Charlie said calmly to the waiter, watched by my mom with a beaming smile. I was probably the only one feeling nervous in this situation. As we were tucking into the dishes being laid out one after another, the dumplings were laid out on the table. The pleasant aroma of dumplings filled the air. Then from behind me, a high-pitched woman's voice rang out. 
right? What are you doing here? You are Sarah. Charlie's face turned pale in an instant. I turned around to see a smirking woman standing with her arms crossed. So you left our bank and had the nerve to come here. You must have settled for a small regional bank, huh? Can you even afford this? Charlie stopped his chopsticks and looked down slightly. That's none of your concern, Sarah. Besides, we are in the middle of a precious dinner, so please stop. Charlie's voice trembled slightly. My apologies for interrupting your precious dinner, Sarah said, scrutinizing my mom and me with a lingering look. I met her gaze. Excuse me, may I ask who you are? Sarah laughed again. I'm Sarah Murphy, a former supervisor of Charlie at New York Bank. Sarah seemed to take pride in her association with her workplace. New York Bank? As in the major one? My mom looked at Sarah with surprise, which was understandable since New York Bank is one of the biggest banks. Working there implied a high level of prestige. As we were struck dumb, Sarah let out a derisive laugh. Look at you, amazed just because I work at New York Bank. How low have you fallen to dine with such a poor family? When Sarah said that, Charlie, who usually speaks slowly, spoke louder. How can you say such things to my loved ones? You should take back your words. Sarah continued to snicker even as Charlie grew angry. I tried to calm Charlie down. For the moment, it was the first I heard of Charlie working at New York Bank, but I knew he had changed jobs due to harassment from a superior at his previous bank. He had been pursued by a married woman who was his mentor at the bank where he first got a stop. When Charlie firmly rejected her advances, she started to blame him for her mistakes and even deliberately lost documents he was responsible for, subjecting him to severe bullying. Eventually, Charlie couldn't endure the harassment and resigned. This is the woman who was Charlie's new employee mentor. So, you're the one who drove Charlie to resign? What are you talking about? I just honestly reported to the boss that Charlie couldn't do his job. I was merely fulfilling my duties as the mentor for dropouts. You were just his new employee mentor, but you were very close to him. My words made Sarah pause momentarily. She seemed to realize that Charlie had told me everything. Then she blinked and furrowed her brow. Who are you talking to? I'm a different class of person from you people. How are we different in class? We are entirely different. An elite like me working in the foreign currency deposit department of the major bank, a man who has dropped out of the elite and works hard all his life for little pay, and a woman working for some dirty small to medium enterprise, and an old hack who works part-time. I am not someone you can casually chat with. Sarah's harsh words naturally made my jaw clench and my teeth grind. She looked at us and laughed heartily. I feel sick sharing a meal in the same place as you. I'll forgive Charlie for old time's sake, but can this low-class family leave now? I was at my breaking point and almost slammed my napkin on the table, but my mom stopped me. We will leave once we finish our meal. Please go back to your seat without minding us. Your food will get cold. Looking at her table, there was only one set of dishes laid out. My mom's words implied eat alone and be miserable. Considering the conversation over, we turned back to our table and picked up our chopsticks again. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow hastily reaching for a plate. You guys are a burden on society. The next moment, I heard a splat of sound. Turning towards the sound, I saw a smashed dumpling sticking to my mom's cheek. Sitting across from me, old hags and pool folks should stay away. Hey, how terrible. Could you do that? Are you okay, Carol? I'm so sorry. Someone Charlie was about to call the restaurant staff when my mom stopped him. It's not right to throw food, especially something so hot. While she wiped her face with a napkin trying to remain calm, her expression was full of disgust. Sarah laughed loudly at this sight. 
Let's just leave. This meal is ruined anyway. You're Sarah Murphy from New York Bank, handling foreign currency deposits, right? That's correct. It seems you don't have to worry about dementia yet. Keep up a part-time work. Sure, I will remember you well until tomorrow. After saying that, my mom silently stood up and walked away briskly. Her cheek was red, so we decided to stop by a doctor for treatment on our way home. Charlie apologized many times for the day's events, but my mom, with a smile, said, It's not your fault, Charlie. No need to apologize anymore, and she forgave him generously. I was curious about my mom's words, but their meaning became clear the next day. The following day while I was at work, taking my lunch break, I received a call from Charlie. He usually didn't call during the day. Thinking something must have happened, I quickly answered, and Charlie's voice was trembling. Who the hell is your mom? What are you talking about? I received a strange call this morning. The content was bizarre, but it seems my seniors already know about it. Charlie was panicking, his thoughts jumbled as he spoke. However, unable to understand what Charlie was trying to say in his panic, I decided to listen to his story after work. We decided that if it was matters involving my mom, we would talk about it with her as well. So we headed to my mom's house. I, Jessica, Charlie. What is it? Craving my baked potato again? Baked potato? I'd love those, but no, that's not why we're here. Was it you who called my bank expressing interest in doing business? Really? Is that true, Mom? While tying her apron, my mom smiled mischievously. That's right. I'd like to do business with your bank from now on, my dear banker. Charlie looked utterly flabbergasted. Charlie, what business? As I asked, Charlie took a deep breath, trying to calm himself. Then the doorbell rang. Just in time. Come on, you two. Join us. What? When my mom opened the door, a tall man followed by a smaller, hunched-over Sarah stood there. Why is the president of New York Bank here? The man, sweating and offering a luxurious gift, appeared to be the president of New York Bank. We are here because of the sudden account closure. What has happened? I have decided never to do business with your bank again. My mom stated with an unusually sharp tone, uncharacteristic of her usual gentle demeanor. The president was in a panic, his shirt collar soaked with sweat. My eyes met Sarah, but Sarah quickly turned away. Please let us know if there is anything we can do. However, we earnestly request you to reconsider the cancellation of the $150 million deposit. So the phone call I received this morning wasn't a lie, Charlie murmured, eyes widening in realization. You were the ones who refused, right, Sarah Murphy? You said our classes as people are different, that you feel sick being in the same space as someone lower class like me, right? Then you wouldn't want to hold on to my money either. That's not what I meant. Sarah struggled for words, her eyes darting around. The bank president turned sharply towards her. Did you say that? Do you not know who this woman is? She is Carol Jones, one of the top three investors in the USA, a legendary figure indeed. My mom was a well-known legendary investor with a net worth of several billions of dollars. She had entrusted $150 million for management to New York Bank. However, due to the incident with Sarah, she decided to cancel this deposit. Realizing the gravity of her actions, Sarah trembled. What are you doing? Apologize to her. The president forced Sarah to apologize. I am truly sorry. My mom watched them apologize with a quiet disdain, however, her words cold. No, I will not forgive you, as I have already decided and mentioned on the phone today. Please transfer my deposit to the designated bank by the end of this month. I am so sorry. Please, I beg you to reconsider. I didn't know who you were and was rude, 
but such an incident will never happen again. If you judged people by their appearance and acted so rudely towards them, then I can't trust you. Sarah swallowed hard at my mom's sharp words, collapsing to her knees. Please, I'm really sorry. I was astonished to see two adults, Sarah and the president in a suit, apologizing profusely to my mom. However, my mom did not nod in agreement at all. Sarah, realizing she was not forgiven, looked up, then making eye contact with me and Charlie, she crawled over. What are you doing, Jessica? Charlie. I'm so sorry. Please forgive my rudeness. Sarah continued to apologize loudly, dripping with sweat. Then she gave a creepy smile and started talking to us. I never thought Charlie would be dating such a high-class daughter. You are something. Birds of a feather flock together. Charlie's brows furrowed naturally upon hearing Sarah's words. Then the president asked, Excuse me, do Charlie and Sarah know each other? Sarah visibly paled at the president's question. Charlie clenched his fist tightly and took a deep breath. Yes, I used to work at the New York Bank a few years ago. Sarah here was my new employee mentor. Is that so? Well, if you're interested, would you consider working at New York Bank again? We can certainly offer you a very good position, the president suggested to Charlie with a smile similar to Sarah's. However, after a brief silence, Charlie looked straight at the president and said, No, thank you. I don't want to be one of the mentors forced into affairs, and I will never return to the New York bank where it is common for junior employees to take responsibility for their boss's mistakes. Forced affairs? Taking the fall for mistakes? Sarah, can you explain this? Sarah turned deathly pale, while conversely, the president's face turned red. Well, that's, do you realize what would happen to our bank if this comes to light? However, I realized that the president's concern wasn't just about the bank. His anger was different from that of a boss who scolds his employees. It was a look of contempt and sadness directed at Sarah. Excuse me if I'm mistaken, but could it be that you, the president, also have something with Sarah? When I asked this, the president looked down quietly, and then drops of water, different from sweat, fell to the floor. You said I was the one you were meant to be with. We are both married, but it, it was just that we met too late. Could it really be? I was speechless at the shocking turn of events. While we were taken aback, the president confronted Sarah, who had been having affairs at work despite being married. Moreover, she was using these affairs not just as flanks, but to continue her relationship with her boss to advance her career. Sarah just hung her head in shame. The president was devastated by the shock of learning the truth. I felt a rush of anger. You sure looked down on us, didn't you? Well, I have a prestigious education and landed a job at New York Bank, and you think engaging in such despicable acts makes you alight. That's, I just wanted to climb the career ladder. Sarah's eyes darted around, searching for an excuse. You just admitted that you're incompetent and can't do your job. Wow, you judge us solely by our appearance, calling us poor. But no matter how excellent your education or career might be, what you've done is morally bankrupt. Now you will face the consequences. After a moment of silence, my mom chuckled and clapped her hands loudly once. That's the end of that. Don't come to my house anymore, and don't contact me unless it's to arrange the payment. Now, if you understand, please leave. Then the president walked away listlessly, followed by Sarah. After they left through the front door, I watched them go for a while. Their aura was heavy and gloomy. Afterward, my mom's $150 million deposit was successfully transferred to the bank where Charlie works, and the matter was settled for the time being. Charlie's reputation at the bank improved due to this, and it seems certain he will be promoted in six months. On the other hand, according to a former colleague of Charlie, Sarah was fired after the incident. 
Her sudden dismissal became a topic of conversation among the bank employees, sparking rumors that something had happened. Then, someone well informed about the affair between the president and Sarah was exposed in the bank. Furthermore, the wives of her other married lovers demanded alimony from Sarah. As a result, her affairs were revealed to her husband, leading to her divorce. Sarah was in debt for alimony payments and had lost her family. She confessed her affair with the president to the president's wife herself, saying, It's not fair that I'm the only one who's unhappy. The wife calmly dealt with the confession and demanded alimony from Sarah. After this backfire and accumulating more debt, no one has seen Sarah since. Three months have passed since then. This Chinese food is always so delicious, but it would have been nice to make up for Mother's Day. After all, Paul, Charlie, and Jessica weren't at fault, but we couldn't finish the meal that time. Right, this is my way of making it up too. We returned to the high-end Chinese restaurant to make up for that day, the three of us dining together again. We just hope for more peaceful days like these. By the way, Charlie, even if you and Jessica break up, I have no intention of changing the person in charge of my deposit. I dislike relationships where love isn't judged fairly. Hey, Mom, what are you talking about? We're not held together by convenience. If we break up, it'll be clean and clear, right, Charlie? Charlie's face turned red even though he hadn't drunk any alcohol. I foul this first. Unless Jessica dislikes me, we won't separate, right, Charlie? Charlie's face turned red even though he hadn't drunk any alcohol. You are passionate just like Jessica's dad when he was young. As I listened to this conversation, I looked in the mirror decorating the restaurant and saw my face had turned the same color as Charlie's even though I hadn't drunk any alcohol.